The mindset is I really look for people who I really enjoy working with people who have got enough emotional resilience and enough psychological resilience to be okay in the uncomfortability. So to just be okay to kind of be able to hold themselves when they are way out of their comfort zone, because that's where you're going to spend most of your time as an entrepreneur. Hey guys, it's Lynn Pedetta here, founder of Outsourcing Angel, a virtual assistance company, and I'm also the co-founder at Dawn Media Productions, a video marketing agency. In this channel, I'm here to help you build a business so that you have more free time to spend with your loved ones. In this video, you will meet Troy Dean, founder of agency Mavericks, who specializes in helping people start their own marketing agency and grow it to seven figures. I love how Troy started off as a voiceover artist and became a WordPress developer and then growing it into a successful agency before deciding to focus purely on helping other WordPress agencies grow their business successfully like he did. This is such a great episode on niching, offers, pricing and more. So let's hear Troy's amazing advice right now. Hey Troy, so good to have you here today. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, uh, we've been in each other's circle for a while, but we've never really actually met here. But thank you so much for referring clients to us. The reason why I wanted to talk to you today is also it's been my passion to go, how do I help more people start a business like I did, which is kind of going from a corporate job to a freelancer and then building it out into an agency. And you're the man behind all that. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what got you into this particular business, helping agencies. Yeah, I didn't do corporate. I was a sales rep a long time ago, like driving around the country selling shampoo and hairspray to hairdressing salons. And I eventually decided that I wanted to do my own thing and I didn't know what it was. So I kind of had a bit of a quarter life crisis and had a bit of a meltdown and then randomly just landed into doing voiceovers in uh, for radio and TV. And I didn't even know what voiceovers were back then. And I had this guy take me under my wing and kind of teach me the ropes and did he say you have a sexy voice or something? Or what did he oh, say? No. <laughs> I, I, met, I was living in a block of flats in St. Kilda in Melbourne. And this I met, ran into this guy in the car park. And like, long story, my, my girlfriend at the time borrowed his blender to make a curry one night. And I had to give it back to him. And I saw him in the car park. And I'm like, oh, I think I've got your blender. I'll, I'll bring it up. And he's like, oh, hey, man, I'm Simon. I, I'm Troy. And he goes, what do you do with your voice? And I'm like, well, that's freaking a <laughs> way to start a conversation. What do you mean? What do I do with my voice, dude? I'm a singer. And he goes, what else do you do? And I said, well, I don't know, but it's funny you mentioned that because I, I think I'm going to study to become an auctioneer because I heard that auctioneers get paid like 500 bucks to sell a house on a weekend. I'm like, I can sell a couple of houses on a weekend. And he's like, you should do voiceovers. I was like, what's that? He's like, you know, for ads on TV and radio. And I said, people get paid to do that. And he's like, yeah, man. So he <laughs> took me down to the Fox FM, a local radio station, which was just down the road from where I lived. And he introduced me to some people and the rest is history. And so, mm-hmm. what, But what happened is I ended up with a lot of time in my hands and I was earning pretty good money as a voiceover artist. And so I started building websites to promote myself as a voiceover artist. Mm-hmm. I was also a musician at the time. I was playing gigs around town. So I built this, this website for myself. And then people in the post-production industry in Melbourne, in the film industry, in the advertising industry kept saying, oh, can you build me a website? And I'm like, oh, I'm sure, maybe. So I kind of ended up in business by accident and had to figure out a lot of things along the way. And so then started and met up with a business partner at a networking event, started a, an agency with him, ran that for three years. Decide, we were just a misalignment of, of partnership. We just wanted different things out of life. So I went back out on my own as a freelancer in 2012. Then by the end of 2012, I was kind of burnt out doing client services, but I'd built this email list off my website and I had about eight and a half thousand people on this email list who had opted mm-hmm. in for an ebook about how to kind of grow a business as a WordPress freelancer. And mm-hmm. I was just documenting what I'd learned in this ebook. I saw so I'd never emailed them again. I had eight and a half thousand people on this email list that got the ebook and then I, they never heard from me. I'm like, amateur hour. So I started mm-hmm. emailing them saying, hey, what do you guys want? How come you signed up for my ebook three years ago and I haven't, you haven't mm-hmm. heard from me? And they all started coming back saying, we just need help growing our agency. And yeah. Like, I want to go pro. I love WordPress and I love doing websites, and but I don't know how to get clients and blah, blah, blah. So I just started teaching them. And then eventually teaching them over email one at a time became unsustainable. So I packaged up all those answers to those questions into a course, I actually a membership site to begin with. And then we launched it as a course in 2015. And mm. um, the rest is history. Yeah. 
Very interesting story. It kind of reminds me of my story. You kind of stumble across the business opportunity. So my first e-commerce business was a failed. And then people asked me, how did you build a, your website for that one? I'm like, yeah, I, I, I got some outsourced workers from overseas do it. You can do it. From, can you do it for me? All right. Then I turned it into a website business. So very similar in that sense. So then from since that day, are you still just helping only WordPress agencies or is your, or are you kind of helping in general? Like if you do own any kind of service agencies? It's not just WordPress, although not, I'd say 95% of our clients use WordPress just because yeah. you know, it's, a, it's a good platform. But typically, it's web design, SEO, and digital marketing agencies. We have content agencies. We have branding agencies. We have web design agencies, e-commerce agencies, SEO, pay-per-click, and they are providing marketing services really to other business clients. That's B2B. And we yeah. are kind of like the agency behind the agency. So we kind of help them with their business processes and their team management and help them with their sales processes and their documentation and coach them through that. We don't teach them how to build websites or how to do their thing. Yeah. Kind of take care of the back office stuff. Yeah, because if you're not careful, you think you have a business, but you become like the self-employed person that takes on all this work and can't handle it all. So yeah, I guess tell me some of the common problems that you find people coming to you with and you go, yep, I've been there and now I'm going to help you. You said this was supposed to be like a 25-minute podcast, did you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sum it up. Just we bullet point for me. For days. I just got off a call with, a, with someone about this recently, like literally while I was running late here. The co- most common problems are this. I need clients who actually have a budget that can pay me so that I don't go broke. Because the most common thing is I'm building these websites for people and they're paying me two grand and I'm going broke. So just the mindset and the confidence to actually charge what you're worth. The second thing is they don't have enough recurring revenue. So they have no recurring revenue. So therefore they can't make decisions about who to hire next or how to actually grow the business because they're doing project work and it's feast and famine. Mm -hmm. So get the job, they do the job, they get paid, they go find another job. The, the next, once you've solved those problems, so you've put your prices up, you're charging what you're worth, you've got a sales process in place so you can sell value, you've got some recurring revenue. The next problem is I'm overwhelmed and I hate my life because I'm working eight hours a day trying to keep up with all the stuff that my clients need. And that's because they need a team member. So mm-hmm. the next thing is, right, let's work out which team member you need to hire. Let's get that sorted out. The next thing is, At that point, then we go, cool, now let's look at the efficiencies in your business and look at your standard operating procedures and make sure that everyone's moving on the same train and get that stuff, your delivery standardized. And then the ultimate goal for me is let's build a CEO dashboard for the agency owner so that the agency owner can, and this is maybe like a a three to five year play from when they start out. Let's look at your dashboard. You look at the numbers and your numbers will tell you whether or not the team are doing a great job following the processes to deliver value to your clients and whether or not you're profitable. Now, what I see happen most of the time is people start with the processes. They think, oh, I've got to document my business before Mm -hmm. I hire a team. And they come to me and they go, wow, I've got this amazing internet built out in whatever system they're using. And I've got all these great processes and I have no clients and I have no team. I'm like, well, it's an academic exercise, dude. Like, let's get some clients first to actually see if this Mm. stuff works. And I think people do that because it's way easier to build out Mm. awesome SOPs in ClickUp than it is to actually get on the phone and sell sell stuff to clients. Exactly. And when it comes to a website as well, how do you actually turn it into a recurring model? Because I know back then when I at here's a few things that I experienced when I was doing it, saying yes to everything, because being able to outsource actually gave me the opportunity to actually do everything for people. So I had SEO, I had websites, et cetera. And yes, there are some components that were recurring, but I always figure out, like, I always kind of pick my brain around how do I even make website recurring? So any tips around that? Or is it about adding on to other services. So it's a very timely conversation we're having here because I've, I've actually had this conversation. This would be the third time this week. So the websites are a commodity, right? As is SEO. It's a commodity. I mean, so the, the, t- the story I've been telling all week is if I'm a dentist in Australia and I type dentist website into Google, the very first listing that comes up is a website that I won't name. And I don't know who they are and I don't mean to offend mm-hmm. anyone. The point of the story is I click on that ad and it is an ad, I go to their landing page and it promises me a dentist website and SEO for $999 plus GST. So the market is now conditioned to understand that that's what it's worth. So Mm. if you want to make money selling websites, stop selling websites. It doesn't mean you need to to (laughs) stop delivering websites or stop building websites. You just need to stop selling websites. Websites should be the thing that you do as a given for your clients. And what you're actually selling the clients is what they want the outcome that they want. So whether it's growth, whether it's more leads, 
whether it's more candidates, whether it's in your world, it would be, hey, let's build you a recruitment funnel to expand your pool of talent, right? That would be valuable. Yeah. Yes, we're actually going to do that via a website and maybe some paid ads and maybe a Facebook group, but I'm not selling you the commodity. I'm selling you the outcome you want. The recipe for this really is get super clear about who you want to serve and then serve them better than anyone else. And we mm-hmm. just happen to build websites and do SEO as part of the delivery model, but I'm not starting the conversation with websites and SEO. Gotcha. So real, really, you have to think about the bundling. You really have to bundle services, right? Rather than just thinking website. Because I know with my current business, this YouTube service that I came up with, I didn't actually start it that way. I thought, you know what, people need to make videos for themselves, right? And I thought I'm just going to go out there to helping people to kind of look good, feel natural on camera and make them these video snippets, etc. But I quickly realized that people don't know what to do with a video, where they're going to do it. And ultimately, they need leads from the video work. So that kind of made me think, okay, well, how do I generate leads with video? Oh, YouTube. But of course, it's been 10 years down the track of entrepreneurship to kind of figure out much quicker. (laughs) And so, I mean, when it comes to working with a lot of agencies, do you also encourage them to like learn to outsource, learn to kind of collaborate with people? And I'm not saying just all Filipino and overseas thing. I'm talking about, I really need to straight away collaborate with a YouTube strategist or someone else to make the bundle work. Totally. So one of the things, and, and full transparency, the, I this has been, as you say, it's like 10 years to have this flash in the pan idea that's like, oh my God, I'm a genius, but it's taken me 10 years of knowledge to get to this decision, right? I feel like, I, I, I'm going to reference a book, which I've just finished reading, which I feel like is the most accurate articulation and crystallization of all of my thoughts over the last 10 years. And I read this book and I'm like, this is exactly it. This is exactly what I know to be true. And this is exactly the model. The book's called $100 Million Offers. I just read it last weekend. Uh, Poor Mosey. Uh-huh. I am in love with it. Amazing. <laughs> I'm like so far down the hormone. My brain right exploded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brain exploded. And then I also told my team, read it this week yep. because next week, yep. as, as much as we thought we we're very experienced and, and veteran, nah, nah. After you read the book, you're like, oh my God, I have to like debunk yeah. everything and practice totally. everything. Here's the way I approach this is, right? Everything that we do to raise revenue has been commoditized by the market. Yeah. So the only way to really succeed is to become the most valuable monkey in the circus. And the way you do that is to own the board. Every problem your client has, you should have a solution for them. It doesn't mean you need to be the one delivering the solution. But if someone comes to you and says, hey, we're going to launch a YouTube channel, and I go, cool, I'm a web design agency, we do some SEO, never done YouTube, but I tell you what, I can bring in a partner of mine, Lynn, she's going to talk about YouTube strategy, she's going to nail it, we're going to knock this out of the park. I'm going to own the relationship with the client, but I'm going to introduce them to my partner, Lynn, right? Mm -hmm. And then I become the conduit through which that success has happened. So I'm elevated in the client's eyes. We're great referral partners. So you pick up some business. It's a win-win-win for everyone. Mm-hmm. Now, full transparency. Over time, if I grew my agency to the point where I was like, this YouTube thing's really taking off, I might eventually go, Lynn, I got to bring this in-house. Like we've got yeah. a great partnership, but I'm going to build my own YouTube department because I'm paying you like 70% of my revenue right now. And this is a big part of our business. Let's have a conversation about how we partner. So what we do is we use consultants and and other agencies a lot to kind of prove a concept. And then sometimes we might just go, look, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I don't want to build that out. I'm just happy to partner with someone. So SEO is a great example. If we build websites, just want to partner with an SEO company to do it because I don't want to build an SEO team. But at some point you might go, hmm, this is worth exploring. I'm going to bring this in-house because it's going to be more profitable, but it's also going to create more headache when you do it internally. Mm, that is so interesting. And you just you can just hear so much years of experience that you can bring to anyone that's starting out. I guess one question technical wise is that how do you advise around pricing? You know, when I first started my business, I was like, okay, someone wanted a website. Okay, I could get it done from overseas for 600 dollars I'll just put in four hundred dollars on top and make it a thousand dollars, you know, or even nowadays I'm starting a new agency, I kind of feel like I'm, you're kind of just throwing some num, just adding a bit of this. Any advice around the pricing yeah. and just adding a bit yeah. of So rule number one, all pricing is made up. Oh, okay. Good to know. (laughs) Pricing is completely made up. There are not like, there's no formula, right? Well, there kind of is, but what you got to understand is that the reason that this agency charges $35,000 for a website and you charge $3,500 for a website is because they have more staff and a bigger building and more rent and they have blue M&Ms and the big glass bowl on the reception (laughs) desk, right? So pricing is completely made up. That's rule number one. Rule number two is you have to be profitable. You owe it to your clients and your team and yourself to be profitable. So 
you have to know how much it costs you to deliver a service. And my kind of rule, even though there is no formula for pricing, this is the rule that I use, which a mentor of mine who's an accountant taught me. He said, just follow the rule of thirds when you're starting out, whatever it costs you to deliver a service. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm doing SEO and I have a team in Vietnam that does my SEO for me and they charge me 300 bucks a month to do SEO for a client website. I'm going to start the negotiation at $900 with my client. That's the minimum I need to charge. In fact, I'm probably going to start the negotiation at $1,500, but I know that I can't charge less than $900 because it's costing me $300. Now, why three? Whatever it costs me, I need to triple that because if it costs me $300 to get it delivered, another $300, it's going to cost me another $300 to run my business while that service Mm. is being delivered. So me being on the phone with the team in Vietnam, me paying for Slack, me paying for Zoom, me buying this nice microphone so I can do podcasts to bring in more clients and the influencer, all that stuff is going to cost me another $300. And the final three, and plus non-production wages, so maybe my VA or my own wage. And then the last $300 is net profit that goes to the business owner who also happens to be me. So when you first start out, if you're doing everything yourself, you have to track your time. You have to go, well, it takes Mm. me this much time to optimize a YouTube video for a client. And we're going to charge an arbitrary, charge the company an arbitrary rate of 50 bucks an hour. So it cost me $150 to do that. So I need to charge $450 to optimize that YouTube video because that's what it costs the company, right? Mm. And then you've got some sliding scales to improve efficiencies, maybe use remote staff and leverage some things there where you can improve your margins over time. But that's where you should start. Wow. Love it. I just love that rule already because I've got something to work with rather than just random. And I kind of go, okay, test it out first. And then as you feel, build your confidence and deliver it, then you just feel like you can increase, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, you can't just start to charge a lot and then you don't even know if you can deliver it. Talk yeah. about your program. I'm so curious. Do you usually help people who are starting out to get to become like a seven figure or do you also help people from seven figure agencies to going bigger? Yeah, it's a great question. And again, I just had this conversation earlier, so it's really fresh in my mind. We have people who come Mm. to us who are like in corporate, they want to quit their job, they want to go full-time in their web design agency, they love WordPress, they love doing websites, they've done half a dozen, they're not really sure what they're doing, but they want to go all in and they're terrified of leaving the security of their corporate job. Although having been through COVID over the last almost two years, I think people are now less scared of losing their job and they're actually really cynical about their job. So we have Mm. a big, big percentage of our our audience are those, what I call the nascent, I'm just about to do this and I need some help, right up to the agency who's already doing seven figures and who just wants to scale. And so our sweet spot is really zero to anything kind of over five mil a year in revenue where they've got like 25 or 30 staff. Things start to get a bit funky because those sort of agencies move slow. There's lots of legacy emotional Mm. baggage in the business and they're just, they're harder to work with because they don't, they don't take enough action fast enough for it to be a rewarding engagement. People who are just starting out, we have offerings for them. And then people who are well-established and have a team and are already doing seven figures, we have offerings for them. And it just depends on, my job is if you're a freelancer or you're just starting out as a, f- a freelancer, my job is to take you from freelancer to consultant. And then if you're up and about, mm-hmm. you're established and you've got a bit of a team and you've got some traction, then my job is to take you from consultant to CEO. That's kind of the journey that we, mm. we take. So that means as a freelancer, in a way, they would already know how to make the first dollar, right? They would already have su- sold to some clients doing it themselves, right? Not Ideally. just people that are in corporate and don't know what they're going to start. Yeah. yeah. Ideally. I mean, w- one of the things that we talk to people about when they first come into our world, if they have no portfolio, it's like, you got to get a portfolio together. You got to go and build three websites. And I don't care if you have to build three websites for free in your spare time. There's a leverage point here. Go and build a website for a local school or a local kindergarten that needs one. And then write a press release about the project and get heaps of PR. You're not getting paid. Mm. Just do it pro bono, which means you're hard cost. If you have to spend like 500 bucks on software or whatever, make sure you get reimbursed for that, but you're not making any profit out of it but get, a, get some PR out of it, which brings in more goodwill for you and is a huge win for them. And you've got a portfolio piece and make sure you get a testimonial from the client. Do that three times mm-hmm. and now you've got enough to go to the market and actually start promoting yourself. Gotcha. And then all your program is basically masterminding or is it, so there are some, I've heard there were courses and mastermind or a combination of of a few. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. We're kind of pivoting on the surface. It looks like we've got a bunch of courses and a group coaching program and, and that's what it is. But behind the scenes, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we do for clients. 
So, so for example, we will take someone's process and we'll document it and we'll turn it into a ClickUp template and give it back to them into their ClickUp account. Yeah. So that's kind of a done for you documentation. <laughs> we'll install sales processes and sales pipelines in their business. For those who want to grow their own team, kind of slightly different to your model, but we actually place staff for them. So we're not a staffing agency mm. or an outsourcing agency, but if they want to grow their own team and hire their own team, we'll help them with that. So it's a little bit of done for you. There is also coaching. There's uh, squadrons of other agency owners for accountability. We have our live events every year. And they're really for the agencies who are all in, 100% committed, want to grow their, their business. For those people who are not quite there yet from a mindset point of view or a commitment point of view, we have a bunch of courses on our website that people can, can take it like a self-paced learning thing to help them solve particular problems. Yeah, that's amazing. It just seems like there's so many options for different type of people at different stages. Finally, you were talking about mindset. Just one last question is, out of all the students that you've worked with, what makes some people succeed in your program or in their agency and what makes others don't? So what mindset do they have? Such a great question. It's, you know, <laughs> it, it's all very well to say you've got to take massive imperfect action. That's something that we talk about all the time here. You have to take massive imperfect action. The mindset is I really look for people who I really enjoy working with people who have got enough emotional resilience and enough psychological resilience to be okay in the uncomfortability. So to just be okay to kind of be able to hold themselves when they are way out of their comfort zone, because that's where you're going to spend most of your time as an entrepreneur. You, you're going to, you, mm-hmm. most of the time you're just getting slapped in the face 150 times a day and you've got to get up and keep going. So People who aren't prepared to let go of the way they've been doing things and they're not prepared to get out of their comfort zone and they're not prepared to stand on the edge and look over the edge of the cliff, if they're not prepared to do that, they're going to get limited results. And so the the mindset is just someone who's okay enough in their own skin to go, I can dance on the edge here. And even if I fall, it's okay because there's heaps of scaffolding around. There's a whole network of people here to support you and there are coaches and other agencies and But some people just aren't willing to get close enough to the edge to have a look over. And they're hard to work with because they just don't take enough action. Yeah. Business is definitely one of those uncertain places that never feels certain, right? How many years have we been in business that is still kind of on the edge? But luckily, I naturally love on the edge. It kind of like keeps my my toes up. Well, thank you so much, Troy. How can people connect with you? They're interested in working with you. Yeah, agencymavericks.com is the best place to go check out what we've got. And anyone's keen to sort of learn more, go to the website and just uh, book in and have a chat with one of our team. We've got a whole team of people here who, who have calls every day with people and we can sort of let you know, you know, how we work or what the next step is. Thank you so much, Trevor, for your time. I learned heaps. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. I'd love to hear in the comments below if you have any challenges you're trying to work through in your business right now. And if you love this video and you'd like to learn more about how to start and grow your business, then check out my next video here.